Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode. If you're new, welcome. I'm really glad you joined us. My name is Sergio Gabor and I'm a quality engineer in the automotive industry. Today, as you may have guessed from the video title, we're going to figure out which is the best LED bulb for your signaling lights, also known as indicator lights. Yeah, a very requested topic ever since I tested LED brake lights and LED reversing lights. It took a little longer than expected to make this episode because I was very busy developing a testing method for... How should I say this? Rubber products? No, dildos! <laughs> no man, what's wrong with you? I'm not gonna test that. Or should I? Anyway, in this video we'll continue our adventure to find the best LED products for our car lighting system so that in the end we can do a full conversion from incandescent to LED and I'm planning to do that on my car, hopefully. <laughs> for this test I've selected 16 different products including the Philips Extreme Ultinon, the Osram LED Driving SL and some of the best rated products found on Amazon, eBay and other similar platforms. One of them even has an active cooler <laughs> <laughs> which is something I haven't seen before. In order to test them, I've came up with a series of tests that are focused on rating their performance and reliability. You don't want a great looking product that ends up looking like this. We'll first start with a short overview of these products, after which we'll continue with testing their light output performance, thermal efficiency, CAN bus warning light, low and high temperature cycles and vibration testing. All these parameters will be compared to a normal incandescent bulb to see if any of these are worth your money. So let's get started. Most new premium cars come equipped with LED indicator lights from the factory, but there are still a lot of vehicles which use classic incandescent lights, and most use these socket types. The good news is that the majority of the products in this episode can be ordered with either of these sockets. But why should you upgrade to LED? Well, compared to incandescent lights, LED offer instant illumination, as seen here. Another obvious advantage of LEDs is the increased brightness, although, as we're gonna see, not all LEDs are better in this regard. Besides this, LEDs have a theoretical longer lifespan than incandescent lights, and they just look cool and modern. <laughs> it's not all good news though, as LEDs also come with some disadvantages, one of them being thermal management. That's not a problem for the headlight housing directly, as it's designed for high temperature, but it's a problem for the bulb itself, which can melt or produce smoke that will cause damage to your car. For indicator LEDs in special, another disadvantage can be their low power requirement, which can lead to an error light in your dash, but more annoyingly is the hyperflash. International regulation mandates that signaling lights must blink with a frequency of 1 Hz, 1 second on, 1 second off. But, because of their low power consumption, the car basically doesn't detect them, and your indicator either blink very fast or do not even power the LED. To avoid this, an additional module needs to be installed along with your LED bulbs. Now, let's take a look at the products that we'll test today. First is the Philips Extreme Ultinon Generation 2. This bulb had very good results in previous tests, so I have big expectations. It's the most expensive product in this video, mostly because it came with the CAN bus error bypass module in the box. Without this, the price is lower. The Osram LED Driving SL, another product with good results in past episodes. This has the lowest power consumption in this video. For the next products, I assigned a letter to each one in alphabetical order, because you can find them rebranded to hell and back. <laughs> So it would get very confusing otherwise. Some of these products have been featured before on my channel, but in different colors like white and red. In this episode, however, all LEDs have yellow light. The description seen on the left is the advertised specification for each product, with some of them being very optimistic. These LEDs have been selected for this episode based on their reviews and on their design. In other episodes, I provided some key requirements for buying a good product. So, following my own advice, I mostly chosen products which look like they have good thermal efficiency and high light output. But if you would like to use this or similar products, please make sure that you check your legislation in advance. These products are illegal in most countries, but even more important, by using them you can put yourself and others in danger. 
Okay, so those are all the products that we'll test and we'll begin with the CAN bus warning light and hyper flash test. On my car, Bulb N, Ostrom and Philips did not even turn on and I presume that's because of their very low power requirement. Bulb M, L, H and G also failed because they show a warning light in my dash and hyper flashed. But once the CAN bus bypass module was installed, all of them worked fine. <laughs> We already know the advertised wattage of these products, but we also know that most of this is nonsense, especially for the Chinese products. So in the next test, let's find out the real power consumption and we'll also measure their thermal management. As these products are intended to blink every second, we'll measure the startup power of each bulb. And here you can see the values. Osram and Philips are quite accurate, as well as some of the Chinese products. However, these are way off target. Okay, but if we let them run continuously, the power consumption decreases as the LEDs get hot. So in this column, we have the wattage for each product in continuous running mode. And only Philips, Osram and Bulb Eye with the active cooling stayed close to the advertised wattage. It's important to mention that Bulb K and F are designed to work as indicator lights, as they maintain this high brightness only for a short duration. Did you see that? The light output decreases after one or two seconds. Quite interesting, I haven't seen anything like this and it's probably designed this way to avoid overheating. Good idea. Speaking of overheating, next is the thermal management test and we'll measure this by using a thermal vision camera, both in blinking mode and continuous mode. Bulb B, J and K recorded the highest temperature while blinking, getting hotter than the classic lamp and in continuous mode, Bulb B again, C and J recorded the highest readings, but all three are below the incandescent lamp. Next, we move on to the light output test and for these products, this is very important. Failing here would disqualify any product, no matter how good it is in any other test. So, in the first part, each product will be installed in a headlight and the light output will be measured with a lux meter at 1.5 meters from the source, as we did in previous episodes. After this, we'll measure the light output of each product without being installed in a housing. We can call this test the raw light output. In the headlight, we start with the incandescent bulb, which has a maximum reading of 109 lux, so this is our control. We're not gonna go through each one by one because that's very boring and it takes a long time, so we'll take a look at the results side by side. Can you guess which one is which? Well, probably not. I couldn't imagine that both Osram and Philips have such bad results, especially Osram with 14 lux. I'm not sure if this is because of the headlight design, but we'll find out in a moment. Bulb A has great performance being almost three times as bright than the classic bulb. In second place is Bulb H and third is Bulb K. LEDC did not fit because it's bigger than the standard incandescent bulb, so I had to remove some material to test it. Hmm, interesting results. But now let's move on. It's very hard to judge the performance of these products correctly, because some headlights are more suitable for a specific LED type. If we look at Osram and Philips, we can see that their LEDs are facing backwards, so to say, or towards the base of the bulb. These products rely on a mirror behind them to project the light correctly. So in the second part of this test, we're going to remove the housing from the equation and we'll measure the light output directly from each product. The LEDs will be placed on a spinning table and the lux meter will be fixed in place to record the maximum light output. Well, as expected, the housing plays a big role in the performance of any product. And we can see that the previous best result from Bulb A is not even in the top 3, with the brightest being Bulb K. Philips and Osram perform marginally better, but there is no denying that some of the other products are superior in this regard. For the low temperature test, I left the bulbs in the freezer at minus 20 degrees Celsius, simulating a very cold winter night, and this test was repeated three times. The only product that failed was bulb L, which started to flicker. Next is the high temperature test. During hot summer days, temperatures inside your headlight can reach 70 degrees Celsius, so we need to make sure that these products can work properly at these temperatures. This test was performed again three times for three hours each. After sitting in the oven, bulb E and L failed. 
Now, back into the oven for the thermal cycle test. Here the bulls will sit in the oven running for 30 minutes, still at 70 degrees Celsius. After which I'll sprinkle them with cold water to rapidly lower their temperature. Just as before, this test was performed three times. And here we lost another LEDE. Good thing I ordered more than two. <laughs> and bulb A, which had a structural failure, but not an electrical one, coming apart due to the thermal shocks. Now for the final test and the most destructive, the vibration test, where the products will be strapped on an oscillating tool to induce vibrations for three minutes. If the bulb survives without suffering a structural failure, the test is passed. Some people may argue that there is no way a light bulb will be subjected to such vibrations, and they're somewhat right. But did you know most electronic components in your car are subjected to similar test conditions? Yes. This is called rapid aging and I work with tests like this on a daily basis. There's no way our car navigation system will ever sit at 160 degrees Celsius, but the components inside are tested anyway. So even though your car is brand new, it went through a lot of testing before it was delivered to you. Now regarding the LEDs, if a product fails in this test, it's not such a big deal, but it does help us to separate the better built products from the bad ones. And with that, the tests are done and we can form an educated opinion on these products, or at least a personal opinion. <laughs> For rating these LEDs, I'll focus my attention on three main aspects. Light output, temperature and dash warning light. Everything else is second. Starting with Osram and Philips, it's clear that these are very well-built products and highly reliable. However, the cost is higher and without a CAN bus error bypass module, they also show a warning light in your dash or do not even turn on. But the biggest problem is the light output, which is lower than the incandescent light, with Philips being a bit better than Osram. Because of that, I'm not able to recommend neither of these two products. My rating for the Philips and Osram is, you can do better. LED A is a better product, with great light output and with no warning light in your dash. It failed in the thermal cycle test, but more seriously, it runs hotter than a classic incandescent light. So it fails in one of three key aspects. Because of this, my rating for this product is okay if it's cheap. LED B is mediocre. Looks serious, but it's not really that special. Light output is not that high installed in a headlight, but raw light output is decent. However, it runs very hot and for this reason, I cannot recommend it. You can do better. LED C is a freak and just like LED B, it looks serious, but it's a bad joke. <laughs> Looking at it, uh, one would expect great thermal management, but no, that big heatsink is causing more problems than it solves. It does have good light output, but it runs too hot to recommend. You can do better. LED D has great thermal management and depending on your specific use, can have good light output. It also has a compact design, making it easy to install. However, expect to see a warning light in your dash with this product. Okay if it's cheap. LED E has great light output, no dash warning light and what looks like good thermal management. But it failed in the high temperature test, letting me believe that under that glass cover, the temperature is much higher. Speaking of that glass cover, in previous episodes, it came loose following the thermal cycle test, so watch out for that. Okay if it's cheap. LEDF is finally a good product. As mentioned, it dims after a second to prevent overheating, which is a great feature. It's also very bright and doesn't show a warning light. Thermal management is marginal, but being this bright, it's expected. In addition, it survives the endurance test, earning a recommendation from me. Almost excellent, but not there yet. LEDG is advertised as having 30 watts. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, expect a warning light in your dash with this one. Other than that, light output is a bit poor, but it depends on your application and it has good thermal management. My rating for this product is, you can do better. LEDH is another overly optimistic product advertised at 15 watts, when in reality, it only has five. So, the warning light will be on. Light output and thermal management are great, but keep in mind that this LED has a focused light pattern which is more noticeable than others. Because of this product gets more things right than wrong, my rating is almost excellent, but not there yet. LEDI is just... it's stupid. No other way to say it. 
is the only product of this type with active cooling, which should be great. But actually, thermal management is not that good considering the mediocre light output. This also makes it very big and heavy, so you may encounter issues when installing it. Besides this, it's very prone to structural failure, as it's not properly attached to the base. My rating for this product is, go home son, you're drunk. LEDJ is somewhat good, contrary to how it looks. It has fairly ok light output depending on your housing and there's no warning light in your dash. It's not all good news as it runs very hot and for this reason I'm not able to recommend it. You can do better. LEDK is very similar to LEDF, being the second product which dims with continuous use. It has incredible brightness and doesn't show a warning light, but as you expect it runs hot. So almost excellent, but not there yet. LEDL is another overly optimistic product advertised at 36 watts when in reality it only has 5. With poor light output, a warning light in your dash and poor reliability, my rating is go home son, you're drunk. LEDM has poor light output and shows a warning light. Reliability and thermal management is good, but I'm unable to recommend this product based on this review. You can do better. And finally, LEDN, which is junk. Just go home, son, you're drunk. If I had to choose the top three products in this test, I would say LEDH is in third place, LEDK in second, and in first place, LEDF. But that's just my opinion, and it's okay if you don't agree. You have all the results available, so you can choose what you think is best for you. Let me know in the comments if you agree or not with my conclusion. Unfortunately, I couldn't really give my full rating to any of these products, as all of them have at least one important drawback. So, that's been it, my review of some of the best rated LEDs on the market. If you enjoyed this episode or just found this information useful, hit that like button and let me know what other products should I test in the future. If you would like to support me with making more videos like this, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member at the link in the description. Patreon members always have exclusive ad-free access to all my videos and have the chance to win some of the products that I test. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye!